So those are some of the challenges. But there is a lot of good news as well. We are, in my view, on the cusp of a period in which the liberal arts model will be growing around the world. We already see it in, um, in China. We see it throughout Asia as well as economic development increases around the world. I think we'll see it in other areas uh, also. The liberal arts model, uh, even in parts of Europe that had really adopted different kinds of educational models, you've seen growth of it there as well. So the model itself is actually proving to be appealing around the world. So other, I will say other nations are seeing the value of this particular, uh, this particular model. Secondly, I, I do think that the value of the liberal arts are recognized by people in other disciplines, whether it's engineering, business, or medicine. I know when I talk, from, talk with people from those areas, when I talk with my counterparts from those areas, they're extremely interested in how we can be doing some things uh, collaboratively, because they know, as we do, that you'll be a better engineer or a better doctor or a better business person with some additional grounding in the liberal arts beyond what the mandatory um, university requirements might suggest that you do. Third, businesses are receptive to our message. We're getting exceptionally positive, um, uh, having exceptionally positive dialogue with businesses, with employers in general, about our students and what they bring to the, to the table in terms of uh, being future, uh, future employees at the organization. Google did a study of this, it's referred to as Project Aristotle. They were looking at their teams to identify the strongest leaders. And while technical skills mattered, they also discovered that um, what I would think of as, rather than saying soft skills and hard skills, I'd like to say thinking skills and technical skills. The thinking skills that students brought in terms of how to collaborate, how to be creative, how to be flexible, how to ask the right kind of questions, uh, those kinds of things that are generated in the liberal arts, those were as important to the success of uh, strong teams at Google as were uh, people having the right, uh, the right technical skills. In my conversations with business people, and there's uh, many studies that uh, make the same point, industries are seeing that the flexible, adaptive nature that should be generated by liberal arts study is something that's increasingly valuable to employers, uh, given our very dynamic, uh, dynamic economy. Our uh, fourth point on the, uh, the good news, our career readiness is, uh, initiative is a national model, uh, international e even to some, uh, to some extent, but certainly a national model of how to help students articulate their liberal arts advantage. So uh, people are noticing that model. I think some students are coming here because of it. Uh, and at the very least, it has us in the forefront of that discussion. It's really important for us that all of our departments engage in the career readiness initiative and uh, particularly for those coming up with three-year planning this year, we'll be working with you on that. It's not just about the workplace either. It is about creating a life of meaning. We know from surveys that today's students and the ones coming up right behind them are very concerned about living a life of meaning and purpose. They somewhat get, I think, a bad rap as being only interested, only interested in their jobs or their careers or money or income or whatever it is. But I don't think they separate it the way that some of us older folks tend to separate it. They actually think of those two things as intersecting, that you can have a good life, you can have a meaningful life, a purposeful life, and uh, that can be tied in with the career uh, that you do, and that they think of it that way, uh, that way from the start. Well, this kind of life of purpose, life of value, life of meaning is the kind of thing that we're teaching our students from the time that they arrive in CLA. So all of these things, I think, are very good signs. And I will, uh, I'll add just one more. The research and the creative work that we do is, is very present in our day. It's, it's very uh, apparent to people. I always say if you look at the front page of the newspaper, or you look at the home page on a news website, the liberal arts are all over that page, whether it's talking about uh, something related to uh, um, art, and maybe there's a, d a dispute over some kind of, uh, whether it's a, a film or a piece of literature or a sculpture, whatever it might be, whether it's something about economic policy, crime, education, achievement gaps, uh, or whatever it might be, international conflict, and so on. All of that is us. That's the work that we do. So we have an extremely strong case to make that we're doing the work, we're asking the kind of questions that are actually driving national discourse. 
And I think that's important for us to keep emphasizing, reminding people that that's happening here in this college. So all of those are on the plus side. Let me touch a bit on the, the more worrisome trends that I, that I pointed to before, because they do pose challenges, but I do think there's also some opportunity there as well. 